Welcome to the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. In this video, we're going to talk about the pitching moment of the UWS-1 Ultralight Airplane Wing. We want to figure out what the moment is on the main wing of the Ultralight Airplane, the UWS-1. Now, if you don't remember what moment is or coefficient of moment, I'll put a link up here in the upper right hand corner that you can click on. That is an aero terminology video that I made describing coefficient of moment and how it comes about. On this diagram we have here on our title page, this curved arrow is representing the moment of our main wing. And the moment is essentially a pitch up or pitch down rotation of our main wing because of aerodynamic forces on that wing. Let's figure out why we want to know what that is. You may remember this slide from our last design video for the UWS-1 Ultralight, where we were talking about the weight for the ultralight and the center of gravity. And the reason we want to know that in figuring out the pitch moment for the horizontal tail. In that video, we only mentioned the pitch moment for the wing. In this video, we're going to go into detail on that. And if you haven't seen that last video, I will go over quickly again. If our airplane is flying in a condition where it's not accelerating, decelerating, or it's not rotating, then all of the pitching moments on the airplane when you add them together will be zero, which is what this equation is representing. So what are those pitching moments? Well, one is the center of gravity in relation to some reference point. In this case, it's the 25% of the mean aerodynamic cord. And we use that because our wing pitching moment is centered there. So pulling down on the CG, and it could be in front of or behind this reference point, but the CG is going to be pulling down. So that's one pitching moment. We got the wing pitching moment, and generally that's pitching down, which will be negative, and down being forward and down. And then we also have the tail, and it's going to be counteracting this one, and it may be countering this one if it's in front, or it actually might be adding if the CG is behind a reference. And there's going to be a moment from the tail force and its distance from our reference. And you add all those up and you'll get zero. Now we can have several different conditions where these still add up to be zero. So for example, here we have pictured straight and level flight. But we might have a stall condition, maybe even with their flaps fully extended, where we have a high angle of attack and we're going much slower. But as long as we're not accelerating or we're not changing our pitch, if you add up all those forces, you'll still get zero. Well, let's start getting into details of what this wing moment of this equation is. And by the way, the next video for our design series is going to be covering the lift on the tail and its distance from the reference. Once we have all three of these parts of our pitch moment figured out, we can work on the aerodynamic design of our tail. Well, there's an equation for calculating our wing pitching moment. And it's the value of Q. And if you haven't seen the first video on the wing design for the UWS-1 Ultralight, I'll put a link up here in this corner for you to go watch that. And we talk about what the value of Q is. As a real quick reminder, maybe you have seen it and you've forgotten, Q is actually a little shorthand value for one half of the air pressure multiplied by velocity squared. Now we are always going to use, at least for our design, sea level air pressure. But for velocity squared, it'll be various conditions. For example, stall condition, our maneuvering speed, our cruise speed. And I've already pre-calculated a few of those values. So Q at stall for ultralight airplane, velocity is 24 knots. And when you plug all those values together, you get almost two pounds per foot squared. Our maximum cruise speed at 55 knots gives us a value of 10.2. And our maneuvering speed will depend on the weight of the airplane because our maneuvering speed changes based on the weight of the airplane. So we'll calculate those as we need it. And let's go back up here and talk about some more. Big S is the surface area of our wing. The small c is the mean aerodynamic cord of the wing. If you need a refresher on the mean aerodynamic cord, I'll put a link up here in the upper right hand corner to an aero terminology video that'll refresh you. And the C sub M is the coefficient of moment of the wing. Now we're going to have a different coefficient of moment on various parts of the wing. 
part of the wing that's over the fuselage. And by the way, this is a high wing airplane. So the top of the fuselage will have the airfoil shape. It will have a different coefficient of moment than say out where the ailerons are. And when the flaps are deployed, of course, it's gonna have a different coefficient of moment. Because when you deploy flaps, you're generally really increasing that coefficient of moment. Now, Barnaby Wayne Fan, in his collection of articles called Airfoil Selection, in this case, gonna be part six, he says that when you've deployed your flaps, that coefficient of moment is dominated by your flap coefficient of moment. The airfoil coefficient of moment contributes almost nothing. So that'll make our calculations a little bit easier in the flap portion of our wing. On the UWS one, we intend to use double slotted flaps. At least that's the current plan. We could change our mind a little bit later, but for this part of the design, we're gonna assume that. The coefficient of moment for the double slotted flaps we intend to use is minus 0.65. And that comes from this NACA wartime report in case you wanna look it up. Now for the particular airfoils we intend to use over the fuselage and aileron spans at our maximum coefficient of lift, the coefficient of moment is awfully close to zero. So that's what we're going to be using for our uh, coefficient of moment in our calculations, which basically means that aileron spans and fuselage spans really aren't a factor when we are at our maximum coefficient of lift on the main wing. Now the airfoil we're going to use is a custom one that I came up with. If you're interested in looking at how that came about, there are a couple of videos for you to watch. One is the potential final wing configuration, and the other one is the airfoil selection part three. Of course, you can look at part one and part two if you want to. That's just information leading up to the final selection in part three. I'll put a link to the uh, video for the airfoil selection part three up here in the right hand corner. The maximum coefficient of moment though is about minus 0 0.055 at an angle of attack, a two dimensional section angle of attack of about 5.5 degrees. And we'll wanna know that for a particular flight condition where that wing coefficient of moment is a maximum at this 5.5. I use the XFLR5 software program to develop our airfoil. I've made a plot here of our coefficient of moment, which is our y-axis, versus angle of attack. Now, as you can see, up here at our maximum coefficient of lift, our coefficient of moment is almost zero, but it is a fairly significant value down here around Oh, six degrees, angle of attack, five degrees, somewhere in that range. And by the way, these three different lines are just different Reynolds numbers. This solid blue line is your typical Reynolds number in cruise. The dotted one is the wing tip at stall. And this dashed one is at the wing root at a little bit higher than cruise speed. Well, let's come up with the other values that we were looking at for the moment equation that we looked at earlier. So our wing surface area is 90.1 square feet and our mean aerodynamic cord is 3.42 feet. Now these values can be found from the uh, wing final design video that I mentioned before. Now we get to do some calculations, but we're going to use a spreadsheet to do the calculations for us. So what you're looking at here is a screen capture I did of a portion of the spreadsheet that I'm using to calculate the tail surface area. Just to kind of give you a quick rundown on the colors that you're seeing here in the various sections. Now these gray background boxes you see are either labels, something that is not filled in, or something that's calculated. It's the white boxes where I need to pay attention because that's where I fill in numbers myself. The green boxes are result numbers. I've divided the wing up into three sections, the fuselage section, flaps section, and aileron section. And that is because, as I mentioned before, we can get a different coefficient of moment over those different sections. So we'll calculate coefficient of moment separately and then add it up. So as you can see, a fuselage is about 5%, flaps are about 70%, Aileron's about 25%. Now I've calculated the surface area for each of these sections, 
and then I added it up and this is just so that I can verify that I haven't made a calculation mistake in here and 90.2 square feet is the correct value for the surface area for our wing. Then I went through and calculated the mean aerodynamic cord for each of these sections and as you would expect since we got a tapered wing out here near the aileron section we're at two and a half feet for the mean aerodynamic cord and then near the root we're at a roughly 3.9 feet which is what the root cord of the wing is. I've calculated the wing moment under four different conditions. Now the result of these conditions will be used later combined with the moment due to the CG to figure out our tail service area. And so these green boxes here are the moment of the wing under the conditions. So let's talk a little bit about how the conditions are different. And this is at when we're in landing configuration, so we're stalled with full flaps. Well, the coefficient of moment is zero at the fuselage and the ailerons. Now, if you remember back here, when we're near full stall or our biggest angle of attack, our coefficient of moment is zero. So that's what we're seeing here. With the flaps extended, these dual slotted flaps, we have a negative 0.65 for our coefficient of moment. Now Q is what we talked about before, that one half of the air density multiplied by velocity squared, and it's that 1.95 we already talked about earlier in the slide. And we do a simple calculation for the moment using the moment calculation that we've talked about way back on what the second slide. And just as a quick reminder, that calculation is surface area multiplied by chord, multiplied by coefficient of moment, multiplied by Q. So since we've got no coefficient of moment at the fuselage or flaps, naturally, the wing coefficient of moment in those sections is zero. So the only places we have a wing moment is where the flaps are. And our calculation shows that we have a negative 283 foot pounds of moment. And so we sum these three sections and put it out here. And then we'll use that in another section in our next video. So let's talk about these other three conditions also. What we're looking for is where we're going to have significant moment because that's when we're most likely to need a large tail. If we have almost no moment, it's not really significant, at least as far as the wing moment goes. Now, we may have a zero wing moment, but a huge moment on our center of gravity. So we need to look at some of these edge conditions and then we'll take care of summing them up later. So here's another condition, we're at our maneuvering speed. So maneuvering speed, we're not using any flaps, and we've pulled back to where we're at our maximum angle of attack on our wing and we're right at the stall. And of course, that's one of the conditions for the maneuvering speed. Your, the structural limit of the airplane will not be exceeded because the wing will stall first at this speed. Now remember that the maneuvering speed changes based on your weight of the airplane. And in this case, we're using a light condition. So this is with a small pilot. We talked about this back on the previous design video about the CG. So this is with lighter pilot, so a lower total weight. Now, since we're at the maximum angle attack, our coefficient of moment is zero. The sum is going to be zero. So that's a pretty easy condition. But our CG moment may not be zero. So we need to test the same condition for the CG and then we'll add our zero to whatever that CG moment is. The next condition is again at VA, but this time we are at an angle of attack where we get our maximum coefficient moment. Now, if you remember, let's go back here. That's at this angle around six degrees, seven degrees. Now I use seven degrees because we're gonna be at a higher Reynolds number, which is this dashed line. So it's a little closer to six and a half, seven degrees but it's still roughly the same coefficient of moment. On a different part of the spreadsheet, I calculated what the speed would be, the VA for a light pilot, and that turned out to be 63 knots. And then calculating Q from that, we get 13.5. Now that's gonna be the same coefficient of moment on each section of the airplane, since they basically all have the same airfoil, slightly different Reynolds numbers, but basically the same airfoil. So we do our calculation because we have different surface area and different back. We're going to get different values here, but we sum them all up. When we get a minus 230 foot pounds of moment. Okay, that's a pretty good sized number, a little bit less than the stall one. Let's uh, take care of our last one. So this last one is the same thing as the previous one, except this is with a heavy pilot. 
Now with a heavy pilot, our speed is a little bit greater, so our Q number is a little bit greater. Everything else though is the same. You add all those up and we get a higher moment for our wing, minus 308, when we go to figure out what the total moment of the airplane is. That's what our next design video is gonna be then. We're gonna add up those moments and find out what the tail moment is gonna to have to be to counter them. Now we're gonna to have to make a good first guess on how far back we want that tail to be. We'll talk about that. And then once we know that, we'll know what the lift of the tail has to be. Once we have the lift of the tail, we can calculate our surface area. So we are going to cover all that in the next video.